willing and interested to chat to anybody, um, both interested in working on the types of projects he's doing, but also just collaborations and connections across the state. So, so we'll get started. Um, a few more attendees will come in. As I know, a lot of us are now back to back, it feels like on Zoom. So I just wanted to today use the opportunity to, to, to let you all know about Centre ICE, uh, where we sit within, um, we're based at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and where we sit in relation to the University of Alaska as a, as, as a, as a whole, and then highlight some of the types of projects that we've um, funded um, since we formed in about, I think it was 2017, and then also um, give some chance at the end for me to talk about some opportunities coming, um, both more of these types of webinars highlighting entrepreneurs across Alaska, and also some funding opportunities that, that might be of interest to, to, to those uh, listening in today. So. Centre ICE itself is the Centre for Innovation, Commercialization, and Entrepreneurship. Um, we're here to support innovators and entrepreneurs, giving them educational training, advising on potential directions for their technologies, um, providing funding um, available to, to those innovators. Uh, we have a physical space um, here at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, but really it's also one aspect of entrepreneurialism in the state of Alaska is this ability to bring and connect across a network. Center ICE is one aspect of a wider startup ecosystem across Alaska from Fairbanks through Anchorage to Juneau and across into our rural communities as well. It's a, a large um, pool of interested entrepreneurs and innovators that look to connect and network. So in terms of sort of where does Center ICE fit within the university academic environment, traditionally on the left hand side, um, a, a researcher would be uh, going through and generating taking an idea that they might have looking for um, funding support for that um, idea and then as you see stepping through building out the proposal submitting it uh, if accepted by an agency they would be negotiating and managing the award and then eventually as that project ends it could be a year it could be three years the 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 award would end but whilst going through that um, project, that research and development, there's opportunities to take some of the technology, some of the developed um, products um, and outcomes of that research and move it across into an opportunity that can be a um, entrepreneurial venture, a commercial um, opportunity, could lead to a startup business, or it could be a technology that's actually of interest and a must have for the industries and, and businesses in, in Alaska and, and across the Pacific Northwest. So this is where Center ICE as this innovation hub sits. It's there to help identify opportunities for those um, technologies. Looking at feasibility, um, this could be through our customer discovery training. It could help to understand what's the market for that developed product or that developed project. We also have a connection to the technology transfer office at UEF, and that is then um, assisting those developed technologies to help licensing them out to existing organizations or even helping the faculty, staff or student if they're looking to start up their own company that looks to license that technology. And again, um, part of what we do at Center ICE is helping to support startup companies, those that might have a, uh, a project or a need or a challenge where we can find collaborators and those at the university with the skill set, the capacity, and that capability to support those needs and those product project developments and those challenges, where a business might be looking for a um, a growth area and may not have the all of the skill sets that they need within their team. Within uh, the University of Alaska Fairbanks um, system, we connect to the Technology Transfer Office. Alaska Center ICE itself has supported and continues to support projects from across the University of Alaska system. But our physical space is within um, UAF and therefore we have a very close uh, connection to the Technology Transfer Office. You see here from these images, examples of projects, recognition, award ceremonies, workshops, sponsored research, maker spaces, where we've supported academic researchers to take their technologies or to develop new innovative projects and products from their research and move it into a position to be ready potentially to go out into the commercial sector and actually be a licensed technology or to investigate how this might fit into the market that they're looking to go into and if they need to pivot or if they need to edit their approach to be a more, more viable and a must-have product. Within uh, UAF there is what we call the Technology Transfer Office or OIPC. This is um, 
Traditionally, within an academic institution, you will have one of these offices, and these actually are there to help the process of patenting and licensing inventions. And Center ICE, with its proximity in Fairbanks, connects to the office, but also um, OIPC at UAF works with um, uh, UAS, so University of Alaska Southeast. And then there's also connections uh, to the equivalent group with it within University of Alaska Anchorage. So Center ICE is there as an innovation hub across the University of Alaska system to support and help um, innovators develop the, developing their technologies move them further forwards. My name is Professor Peter Webberley and I'm part of the team. I'm one of a, a, a group of us that are part of Center ICE. So the director of Center ICE, Mr. Mark Billingsley is on the top left there. We have Mr. David Park to just to his right. Um, he helps us on uh, intellectual property and, and, and project management. Um, we have uh, staff and students working within Centerize to support programs, outreach, newsletters, um, and, and programs themselves. And then we also have a couple of faculty members that we are connected to that help in terms of the advocacy and the promotion of um, the capabilities, the resources that we have within Center ICE. And we have one based in Fairbanks, Dr. Alex Hirsch is the honors program, and one based in Juneau, uh, Dr. Aaron Hood um, in the um, geoscience um, um, background. So what are some of the types of projects that we've funded at Center ICE and what might drive you with some ideas of your own where you might be looking for support from Center ICE to move your products, your projects forwards? So one area that we've re that we worked on uh, back in uh, earlier this year is this makerspace community approach. So at UEF um, and across other parts of the state, there are these spaces called makerspaces or a space to make things. It's a collaborative space, could be in a school, could be in a uh, public facility, could be in a library, really just a space to explore and ideate around um, new solutions to challenges that are there. So we um, listened, um, focusing at UEF at the time, onto what are the types of spaces that are out there? What are some of the needs to be able to integrate these into the academic environment, whether it's in a classroom activity, or to be able to how to connect these with some of the community needs? And what are the challenges to be able to make these spaces a place to come and ideate and innovate? We end up, ended up having a request for proposals and we funded four projects this um, spring and into the summer. Uh, the Well, which is a space based in the Duckling Building at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. We also supported the Alaska Media uh, Arts Center that's um, based in the College of Liberal Arts here. Uh, we also focused on a visual arts academy that's looking to bring innovative technologies into the hands of K-12 and age students as they're going through a, a summer program. And then also this teaching through technologies space um, that's there to drive uh, students based um, within the, the middle school um, age range and also the university age range in terms of developing projects and um, solutions to small scale needs and challenges, but in a experiential learning program. We funded projects also um, separate to that makerspace that are highlighted in that K-12 to K age range. Uh, one of those was One Tree Alaska that was working with teachers and students on uh, their experimental design for birch sap and um, the environment around these schools. And then also on the right hand side, we've supported mini grants for teaching through technology students um, looking to propose um, for support and resources to take that idea that might be a need for their community and actually get the resources and materials and supplies they need to actually build out that solution. The main um, aspect of some of our, what we call our, uh, our, our funding is called a seed fund. And this is there for academic researchers and then for community members to reach out to us to look for academics that might be able to provide uh, the capacity and the capability to take those projects, those challenges, those, those um, outcomes and get them closer to being a industry um, a viable product um, or take something that could be in the last few months of a research grant and help it get there to that um, commercially um, viable or, or market ready um, product. So here's two examples at the faculty postdoctoral level. Um, on the left hand side, Dr. Barati, um, she was supported in the technology that she was developing and then working on in her own company that focuses on uh, infrared spectroscopy um, as a non-invasive um, environment to um, be used in preclinical uh, medicine. 
On the right hand side, we've also supported Professor Kelly Drew and the work that she's doing um, within the university and then also in parallel with her company um, into hibernation state analyses for, for those in severe, in severe injuries um, and how they can use the developing technologies um, to help in the movement of these individuals when they're coming from remote locations to a more centralized location and therefore have less of an impact on, um, and, um, on the person who's being moved. We've also supported uh, projects at the undergraduate level. So for anybody here that's connected to an undergraduate degree program or is even looking for undergraduate, an under, potential undergraduate student or students that can help on a ch challenge that they have, a project that they might have, or uh, they're looking for a three to four month long project where they can have a team investigating the needs and, and then actually ended up building out solutions. Two examples here, uh, two year examples on the left hand side is an example of where an entrepreneur came to Centre Ice. We had uh, an entrepreneur looking at a new solution to provide safety, um, the issues that can come from avalanche avalanches. So he was interested in a new mechanism for inflating um, a ballast around the, the, the hiker or the search and rescue person that might be um, out there um, that can inflate um, directly from inside the backpack. So the students spent their senior design project evaluating the current projects that are out there, the current um, um, products. And then they spent the spring semester actually working out and developing a solution that could inflate. And Center Ice was able to support them in their resources and their supplies. On the right hand side is two more examples of projects that have a industry um, need. The top one was a team working with the same entrepreneur on a backboard um, in, in a, um, that can be collapsed down and easily carryable in a search and rescue environment, but once needed can, can expand out and therefore be carried by those in a search and who are performing search and rescue, but is not having to have the backboard fully, um, fully inflated or fully laid out for, that, for the carry into the area where they're having to perform that search and rescue. On the bottom is a student team that was developing a new claw system for unmanned systems based on the needs and the challenges provided to them by the academic researchers and, and the uh, unmanned aircraft system program. We've also had, um, and we'll be having more specific tracks where we're looking for projects that focus on a particular topic or particular area. The one highlighted here was from March of 2020. Uh, and this was one that we brought together very quickly um, after the first, inst first time that the coronavirus and the pandemic was impacting our everyday life. Um, we had multiple projects submitted from within inside the university to develop solutions and develop new technologies to help those impacted and the day-to-day -day management of the coronavirus and the pandemic on society. Three examples shown here, the left-hand side was a computer science engineer an electrical um, engineer coming together to evaluate and develop new ways to test the reusability of personal protection equipment for frontline responders. The one in the middle, we had a um, biological um, scientist looking at developing an assessment tool for Alaskan vulnerable populations down to the community level, something that didn't exist at that time. On the far right, we have a um, infrasound engineer that's working, that worked on developing a sanitization system for um, N95 masks. You can see here that the technology being developed was not the area of, of direct expertise for the individuals, but they saw their capabilities, they saw how their knowledge could be applied to this type of um, topic, and they were successful in being supported for that type of project. So this is an example of where when you see a track that we put out, and you look at that and you go, oh, maybe I'm not directly in that area. It could be that your skills, your knowledge, uh, the technology that you developed could actually apply to that research area. And it's really just reaching out to us through our website or, or through our email to finding out, oh, does my idea align with that core? And it may do. And as a result, you may fit into uh, being a proposal that we will review because it, it does align with that opportunity. Another part of uh, Center Ice, and this is something to, to, to keep in mind um, for, the, for the spring and into the summer, is we have a summer-based, what we call startup program, 
where we're working with students in the University of Alaska. Um, we've had students from UAA and UAF go through this program, and we look to partner them with startup businesses in Alaska. We've done three years of this, and I'll, I'll highlight in the next two slides the companies that we've worked with. And here we support the students to develop a summer-based project with those startups, but also give the students the experience of seeing the day-to-day -day operations of a startup business and the startup companies gain the capacity and the capabilities of those students to work on projects for them and even to adapt based on the students' capabilities and what comes up during that summer. So in 2019 and 2020, you can see here the examples of the companies. We've had companies coming back to us. And we, what we end up doing is we end up um, having a mixer event traditionally in sort of late spring, um, so sort of April time, early May, where we have the businesses or startups that are looking for um, interns for the summer come and talk about the types of projects that they're looking for and their background. And we have the students give a brief introduction to themselves and we get them the ability to chat it was in a virtual setting so the students and the startups can work together to develop a plan for the summer these are the six companies that we um, had students working with this summer so over the whole three years that we've run this program so far we've had 17 companies that we've been able to support and provide um, interns for and 30 total interns so if you are interested um, in having an intern next summer, we're planning to run this again in 2021, where we'd have those interns, um, depending on the environment that we're in, they could be virtual, they could be hybrid or in-person, depending on the COVID um, policies that the university and the, and the business has at that time. And they will work on projects with the business. They'll understand what it's like to pitch and present on potential investment opportunities, they could be developing um, engineering designs. It could be promotional and marketing. It comes down to how can we at Center Ice provide support for students to get an experiential learning program, but also grow and increase the capabilities and the capacity of these startup companies across Alaska. Another aspect of Center Ice, and you're actually attending one of these today, is what we call Ice Jam. So we've been doing these since last August. So this is a, a full year to uh, this, this ice jam. And today is more of a learning event. It's a chance for you to find more about what we do at Center Ice and how you or your organization might partner with us in the future. But we're also open to other types of events. We could, we're, we're interested in having other groups that would like to come and talk about their programming to our, our Center Ice community. And we will share that through our social media channels, through our newsletters and bring in some of the wider statewide ecosystem to come and hear about your um, programs. We also have a, what we call a socialize event that could either be a virtual socializing or it could be an in-person, again, depending on the situation that it might be in at that time. Another example is um, we've run focused events during something called Alaska Startup Week. Uh, this happens every November and it's really there to focus and highlight entrepreneurial programs, entrepreneurial organizations, organizations, innovative businesses across the state and provide training and resources to grow the startup ecosystem. So if you're interested in, in having us help you run an event, we can then highlight that as one of the Ice Jam events and help promote and get the word out there to the wider statewide ecosystem. We would be happy to collaborate. So please, again, get in touch with us, send us an email, um, go onto our website and send, send us a message. We'd be happy to chat with you on any opportunities that you have coming up where we can help uh, to promote and run it as an Ice Jam event. And I'll talk about what are some of the Ice Jam events that we have already looking to plan between now and through to the end of the calendar year. So that's sort of a, a little bit of an, of, of an overview of the types of um, programs and projects that Center Ice has funded over the years and can give you an idea of whether your project or your organization might be a group to collaborate with us, either funded from within the university or looking for university capabilities that we could bring to the table and help uh, support to, to build out a solution to a challenge or a, a project you have. Or if you're here representing a larger organization, maybe some of the groups that you work with, some of the businesses that you're connected with. 
they may be interested in, oh, I wonder if a university researcher could help me in developing out a solution and we can start a conversation and maybe find a who that in, individual might be and work out a way where they can submit a proposal which we would we would evaluate. But in addition to what I've mentioned here as part of the centralized funding, which comes from the Office of Naval Research, I'm going to highlight a few other opportunities of collaborations we have within with that connected to Center Ice that you could become a part of, could get access to, which includes some funding, some training, and some just programs where you might be able to interact with like-minded individuals. So the first one is what's called ICOR or Innovation Core. So this is funded by the National Science Foundation, and it's part of a larger program. We have what's known as an ICOR site. And this is the first step, <coughs> the first step in moving towards what's known as Small Business Innovation Research or STTR, Small Business Technology Transfer Work, where you're looking to get funding support from the federal government. This one's the National Science Foundation. There's others in NIH, Department of Defense, Department of Energy, but ours is focused on the National Science Foundation. And our program is to help take some of those technologies and give you the training and the experience in how to go and do what we call customer discovery. So this is the ability to say, I've got this technology, I've got this research, but before I go off and invest even more large amounts of funding in taking it to the next level technology based, does it actually meet the needs and the challenges of the industry that I think it meets? So finding out if it is, if it is ready as a, what we call a must have technology. So this site program that we have is the first step to, to then allow you as an entity that's gone through it to then apply for the national NICE, National Science Foundation program. Traditionally, if you're going for the national NSF program, you would have an NSF funded project. But by going through our site program, you would then also be able to apply because you've received the funding from us for that particular uh, customer discovery process. So what you're doing is you're using this, what's known as the lean canvas here, where you're defining your value proposition. This will be your product, your technology, uh, your outcome, your, your research design. And then you're going and looking to try and fill in all the different boxes in this canvas, where you're saying, what is the problem I'm trying, I think we're trying to solve with this value proposition? Who are the customers? Who are the stakeholders that you would wanna work with? And what is the solution that would answer those problems and challenges? And then you go out and do interviews with people in the industry to find out what are their needs and challenges, what are their pains that your value proposition you believe is looking to solve. You find critical feedback of are you are you actually developed, is the technology ex exactly aligned with their gains and their or their pains? And then you can ideate, pivot, you can develop your design to then be even more ready to be a must have when it's at a technical readiness level for going out into the industry. So this is an example of the type of collaborative projects we have here at Center Ice that you could become a member of and go through. Here's some examples of some companies and programs that have gone through it in, and are going through it at the moment. Um, we've got companies external to the university, companies that are licensing technology from the university, even undergraduate uh, student senior design projects that have then taken their technology and moved it forwards and evaluated if it is a fit for the industry. Over the three years, we've actually supported 51 teams to go through this with over 100 participants in the teams. And we've had a good mixture between a male-led or a female-led team. And we've had about one third university-based and about two thirds non-university-based um, that have been supported by this project. We also um, are closely connected to the ambassador program that was within the university. And this is, um, as I mentioned, those faculty members that are there to advocate and promote um, about innovation and entrepreneurship within the university environment. So this could be where you come in and attend an event. This could be an innovation sprint. This could be a show and tell of capabilities. This might be Alaska Startup Week. So this is where 
This is the entrepreneurial um, thinking within Alaska. It's this give back, this way to build a network where we can all move forwards together. And one aspect of these ambassadors is to listen to some potential of the potential needs that are out there and maybe think about what type of events could be put on to build capacity, to increase resilience and improve the growth of the startup community inside the academic environment and also externally. We also have the Arctic Innovation Innovator Program and uh, Nathan Prisco, who is one of our Arctic Innovators, mentioned about his um, company and, and sort of he's willing and interested to connect with people on the, on the call today. This is actually a program we've, we've um, got a connection with the Department of Energy and it's focusing on supporting, um, we've actually got two fellows now, early career professionals to look at innovative approaches to some of our hard technology challenges they then spend time based at UAF and they, then they have a national laboratory that they will work with, the Department of Energy National Laboratory. And also we have the Department of Energy's Arctic Energy Office here in Fairbanks. And it's really how to bring together this new, these new technologies that um, individuals like um, Nathan Prisco on the top here and Chris Woodruff on the bottom are building and how to then help get those as technologies out into the industry, but also how to learn and, and develop the, the technology itself through the Department of Energy's um, national laboratories. So as I say, Nathan is, is quite happy to continue um, and, and reach out to people afterwards. So if anybody would like to um, connect with Nathan, his, his email is in, the, um, is in the chat. And if anybody else would like to share their contact information for follow on uh, connections, then, then please do. We have also developed a good a working um, uh, connection to Alston Air Force Base. So within the Department of Defense in Alaska, there are what are known as innovation teams um, that have been developed. Uh, there's at least three that, that I know of. Uh, one's based at Alston called Iceman Spark, and then two are based at Joint Base Elmendorf Richardson, uh, Arctic Spark on the United States Air Force side, and Sparworks on the Army side. And what they're doing is internally is looking to see how they can build out innovative solutions for some of the day-to-day -day needs um, of the Department of Defense mission within, within Alaska and the Arctic. And we've collaborated with them probably for the last two and a half years on how can we build and use capability and capacity that exists within the university to help locally build out solutions to some of those needs. This has included um, visits to the, to the base to talk to those operating in those particular groups within, the, within Ileson to find out sort of what are those challenges that they're having and how can the university help and bring its skills to the table to answer those questions. We've had a couple of uh, iterations of this. Obviously, the uh, coronavirus and the pandemic um, that we're in has, has limited in interactions. But it still led to an ongoing collaboration with Alson on how university-based um, skills can be brought to the table uh, to support our Department of Defense um, mission um, and, uh, and those um, bases within the state. I mentioned um, a little bit about um, Startup Week. There's also something called Startup Weekend. And we're actually uh, going to be running one of these based in out of Fairbanks um, in the second week of November. And I believe for anybody based in Anchorage, there's also one um, being run the weekend before that um, in the Anchorage area. And uh, Kai Holland is leading the, the, the planning of that. These are fast paced 54 hour long events uh, starting on a Friday night and finishing on a Sunday evening. Traditionally, you come to the event with an idea and you present and pitch that idea to the room. It could be 30, 40 people in the room. And then you form teams around those ideas. You, you, you may come without an idea, but you just want to join a team where you've got an, a, a joint passion, a joint interest. And you spend the rest of the weekend iterating on that design, on that idea. You go and talk to the community outside the room and find out what are their, what are their thoughts of the idea that you're proposing. And eventually you come back on the Friday night or the Sunday night, I should say, and you present your new solution, your developed technology, your developed outcome. This could end up leading to startup companies. There's multiple, quite a few companies that have won these startup weekends in, in Alaska that have gone on to form companies that have had investment, that have been successful in startup accelerators. It's a fast paced way to, to learn about the startup environment, but in a fun um, social um, in, in, um, social processing. 
We're hoping or being well that this will have some level of in-person, but we'll we'll be discussing and, and, and finding out more about how that would work out as, as the rest of um, August and into September goes. Another um, program to collaborate with us at Center Ice is, is as I mentioned, is Startup Week. Um, there's going to be events um, across the state. Uh, in 2020, they were in a virtual environment. So if you know of an organization that's looking to put on an event during about the third week of November, then we'd be happy to hear about it and happy to help cross promote that event um, during Startup Week and have it as a Startup Week event. And therefore, those attending Startup Week will also hear about it and it will increase the, the exposure and, and the outreach for your event um, during that third week of November. We're just forming uh, the group that is building out the, the scheduling for this. So I'll be able to provide more information up in, in the future on this, but really just keep your eyes open. If you join our newsletter, you'll hear about these on a fairly regular basis as they look to grow and develop. But it's really just a week of events, normally an hour or a couple of hours per event to highlight innovation and entrepreneurship, both programming and organizations across the state of Alaska. So to finish up from my side today is I just wanted to really focus in on upcoming opportunities, really taking what I've, I've shown and spoken about, the types of funding that we have, the training and the programming, the events, the webinars, the socializing events, and then these startup programmings, because it's really about just reaching out and connecting with us. If you've got an idea, the, more, the worst you can do is just send, us some, send me a message organizing a, a 10 minute or half an hour uh, chat on, on, on a Zoom or if it's possible to meet in person in Fairbanks and just talk about the idea and the project. Does it fit? How could we work it out? An example is I had an entrepreneur connect up with me, um, a local one here in the interior in, in Alaska, um, back in, I think, April or so. He'd, he'd helped and supported with us on, on a program last year and he was looking at some new technologies he'd like to integrate into some of his design but he was wondering if the university had anybody that could help in that project design and I said well I'll, I'll do some um, outreach within the university eventually we were able to find a connection and a collaborator and they then spent some time iterating on what are the needs and, the, and, and what could be developed and then the internal university researcher was able to submit a proposal to Centerize to support that challenge and, and to and work on developing a solution. And once we'd reviewed it and it, it, it was a fit to the center IC fund, we were able to support that project. And that's looking to develop a technology and, and a new solution uh, that will help that business in, in its future development. So that's an example where center ice has been able to support academic researchers to develop technologies for, for those externally. And I mentioned earlier, the seed fund opportunities that we've done for those internal to the university to take their technology and move it um, further closer to an, to an industry ready product um, and be, be something that's what we know as got a higher commercial readiness level um, as well as a higher technology readiness level. So before I jump to the, the, the questions um, on the, um, and, and the chat, I just wanna go down some of these um, options. So the Center IC Fund, we are open for proposals all the time. You will see um, emails that come out through the newsletter or on the university's cornerstone or on the centralized webpage for specific tracks. And these might have closing dates. But one thing that we actually also do is we're open for opportunity, open for proposals or open for connections directly from um, a, a, throughout, the, uh, throughout the calendar year. So if you've got an idea that you see where a seed fund could move it further forwards, then just, as I said, re reach out, but also keep your eyes open for any upcoming specific tracks where you may um, be working in that industry or you may be working in that research area where you see that your product or your project idea fits into. I mentioned and highlighted the i -Core program, the Innovation Core program. We're looking at running another four cohorts. So we, what we'd like to do is bring teams in together so this allows us to do our interrupt, introductory work and then our weekly uh, tag ups and then our wrap up at the end together as one group. So keep your eyes open for information about uh, when that would be starting. We're most likely gonna be starting that sometime at the end of next month. 
Um, and that's traditionally a six week program. So that would run through probably up to Thanksgiving. So keep your eyes open. There'll be an application and, and the ability to submit to be to be a team in, the, in there. And I'm happy to answer any questions through the chat and the Q&A or afterwards on that. Ice Jam series. Today is the first of the academic uh, year. Um, it's the, the first of the new uh, 12 months after we started the first one. But we've got some other ones coming up. Um, in September, as of now, we're planning an innovation sprint type of event where this would be a, either virtual or hybrid, where groups would come together and start working on potential solutions to some topic ideas in a real time, fast paced, even just a few hours. October, we're looking to run an event during Women in Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, this would focus on women owned or women um, managed uh, startup companies. So if anybody knows of one that they would like to have highlighted, um, then please do get in touch. In November, I highlighted the St Alaska Startup Week. So we'll be running uh, events during that week. So if you've got an event, as I said, you would like us to help you put on, or you've got a topic that you think would be of real interest to the statewide ecosystem, then please let us know and we can work with you on, on putting that event on. And then in December, as we as we come into the um, into the holiday, the extended holiday period, then we often have that as a social event to sort of see how the 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 fall and into the winter has gone. Um, and traditionally, ice jams we've had one a month, but we are open to collaborations. We are open to uh, you reaching out to us on an event you might have that's coming up where we could help. Uh, run that event using the webinar tool that you're using today or help promote it through our social media channels, really just to build up the capacity and the capabilities of the state. And then the two events that are starting um, in the next, they're starting their planning process in this next week or so, Startup Weekend. Uh, there's a team meeting actually later today to start planning out um, what that might be. So if anybody's interested in joining the planning team, please let me know. Um, or if they're just are interested in participating, then signing up to the centralized newsletter, you'll hear about the dates for that, the location of the event and the plan for the, for the weekend. And then Startup Week is the, the, the first get together of the groups happening uh, this week um, and, and maybe next week. Uh, I see Melanie on, on board, so hopefully we'll have a scheduled time for that. Um, so please uh, let us know if you want to put on an event. Uh, which community that you would then be based in, and we can help uh, integrate that into the larger programming that would be coming from, from those involved in the statewide com committee. So uh, really, it's just to say uh, we have funding opportunities. Keep your eyes open for those. If you've got a project that you're thinking of potentially submitting, uh, get in touch. Um, I will put my um, university email um, because you've had most of the contacts directly from Center Ice, you can email that email address that came through with the webinar. Um, this is my email as, as well. Um, so if you want to connect, collect, uh, collaborate, connect with me personally, um, there you go. There's Melanie uh, reminding us that um, we have an event next uh, week uh, where we're starting to plan out Alaska Startup Week. So if you want to join that, learn more about the Startup Week um, program and, and how, what it takes to put on an event, then please do get in touch with myself and I'm sure Melanie would be happy to chat as well um, on trying to plan that out and, and um, we can then um, continue to communicate. And then um, and then the, the other, I guess the other one is um, if you sign up to our newsletter, um, so the, the event today was uh, shared with you because you signed up to the, to, the, to the link, but if you're wanting to know more about opportunities upcoming, uh, within the university and those that the university is partnering with, then that newsletter, which comes out about once a month with some additional emails of um, targeted opportunities, then you'd be able to hear about those um, as fast as, you, as, as, as possible and therefore be able to schedule and, and be able to attend uh, when, where, where you can. So um, I have, we do have one question um, on here, um, I was just trying to see if Nathan is still on. Nathan is. So this is a question from Michael. Is the Arctic Innovator Program equivalent to Department of Energy's National Lab entrepreneurship programs like Innovation Crossroads, Chain Reactions, where there is a specific uh, salary involved supporting collaborations with the scientists? So um, I'll, I'll try and answer that uh, for you. And, and then Nathan, if you've got anything to add as, as an existing innovator, I'll let I'll give you the chance afterwards. So. 
In terms of the program, uh, Michael, what we what we have is that there's generally a, an, an open, there's a, a, a call for applicants um, in the um, spring, and then um, those applicants would submit their proposed research idea, and also um, if they've already got collaborations with Department of Energy National Laboratories, um, we would then go through that process of, of obviously interviewing those applicants, and then the successful ones would continue to work with the Department of Energy's National Lab, lab um, Connection to be able to build out the time that they would spend in the National Lab along with the time that they would spend at uh, UAF. Then there is obviously support um, to um, for the actual innovator when they're based in Fairbanks or if they're based at the National Laboratory. And I'm sure Nathan can probably connect with you afterwards to talk more about sort of what is the support that goes with their time based at the National Lab. So I think that's um, as much as I can uh, that, that I would pr probably uh, know th to pass along today. And I'm sure if you've got any specific questions, uh, Nathan is one of the two, um, two National Lab innovators that uh, DOE Arctic Innovators that's online, um, that um, you would be able to uh, um, connect with him um, afterwards. So hopefully that at least answers some of your question. I, I'm, I wouldn't be, I'm not sure I can, I've got the answers to the other um, parts of your, your question. Um, so in terms of Alan's question, are you working with Joshua Resnick? So one of my personal, one of my other personal hats is I'm an unmanned systems uh, researcher. I'm the associate director of research at the Quasi. And therefore we are um, connected through the um, through a Quasi to uh, Joshua's group, um, but not directly at um, Center ICE itself. So um, if you've got a connection to Joshua through that, um, in terms of the um, unmanned systems option, um, that would be great. But um, I do know that there is a connection to Joshua's organization from my research area, but not directly through Center ICE. Any more uh, questions um, on the Q&A or in the chat? Um, otherwise, I can talk a little bit more about um, a, a, the, the I, or either the I-Corps program, um, if anybody's interested more in that, or sort of um, examples of where we've had um, student teams working on um, projects and challenges. So if anybody's got any specific topic that I've presented today that they'd like brought up, then uh, now's your chance. Um, I'll give you a couple of minutes to, to type anything in. Um, otherwise, I'll, I'll, I can go into a little bit more detail on the um, seed fund opportunities that we've supported here. Okay, what I will do is I will uh, jump back to a specific slide and um, talk about that in more detail. So, so I think uh, this, this, this slide here will be well, you're now seeing that the slide that highlights the undergraduate um, research that, that we've supported. So this is um, these two student projects are two good examples of where Center ICE has collaborated with those in the community. Um, this was where um, at the beginning of the academic year, so in, so in the next uh, week or so, um, the faculty present um, project ideas, project challenges to the students in, as student teams to work upon. So uh, the two examples in the left and the top right were presented by Ray Hoot, who's, who's the entrepreneur working with us, uh, to present to the faculty that was teaching that class. So this was a senior design um, class that last the academic year. And the student teams came together and said, that's the project that we want to work upon. And they spent the full semester um, understanding the project need, understanding the challenges that were out there, evaluating what are some of the existing products that could answer that question. And at the end of the semester, they presented what their project was going to be for the spring. They then determined what are going to be the resources and the materials that they need to be able to um, actually um, build out that um, technology for the entrepreneur. They then approached Center ICE and said, we've got this project we've been working on um, and we're going to be building during the spring semester. Uh, does what we're looking to do fit with Center ICE's um, mission to support innovative products that could have a commercial opportunity and, and move out into the, in, into the industry? And we, we, we said yes. 
So we then they then sat down and, and wrote a proposal to us for for funds, and we reviewed that using our uh, metrics and our criteria as we would do if, if anybody was submitting a proposal to us. Uh, they were successful, and then they were able to build and increase the capabilities of their of their project because they had these additional resources. At the end of the uh, the end of the academic year, the students presented on their final solution, the lessons they'd learned, the iterations, the projects they'd gone through. The one on the left passed on directly their solution design to um, Ray Hoot. The team on the right um, actually then took that project idea and ran it through our i training program. So they then went through and sat down and said, okay, what is our value proposition? What is, what is the technology we've developed? And who might be those external to the university that would use this? Could it be those um, performing search and rescue? Could it be in the back of a helicopter, therefore being a, a piece of um, emergency equipment? Could it be um, on a police or fire services pool of equipment? Could it be in the back of a vehicle that somebody could pull out when needed? But they didn't know. So they then were supported in providing some training on how to ask those sort of questions without explaining exactly what the product was because you're really using that customer discovery process to find out what are the needs and challenges of those working in the industry and you're asking those questions of why aren't they using these type of these type of products is it because it's not out there is it because they're too bulky is it because they're too costly or the, it's the, or it's not effective for what they need and eventually you find out their real must-have need and then you look to see, does that fit what your value proposition is? And you do that 15, 20 times. And you end up with a, a, an evaluation, a critical feedback to say, we've got 20 groups that are different areas of the industry, and they are showing a need for these technologies. And they're showing a need that what we have developed is ready for the market. That's one example of where a site program gives you that pool of knowledge to then go off for a national program, or even to spin that out and say, okay, we've now got a product that we can form a company around. And we can now take this idea and apply for a small business innovation research grant. The student team on the bottom that was developing the unmanned systems, they used the customer discovery process to talk to those in the unmanned systems industry, but also research scientists that, that use unmanned systems for carrying equipment. And they found out some of the issues that it comes and what the type of weight of the payloads are to see if their design would actually have an application as a piece of equipment that a research scientist or a unmanned system manufacturer would add into their equipment portfolio. What they found was there needs to be iterations on their design that gets shared back to the uh, next group of mechanical engineering students. And you have this iteration process to build out a technology that has a commercial viability and there's a market sitting there ready for the opportunity. So that's one example of where a both an academic problem set and a community problem set was worked upon during the academic year was then two of them taken through this customer discovery process and eventually builds out to an opportunity where the team can then take that and move it forwards into a potential business opportunity, or even have a licensable product that another or a separate organization might be able to um, use and therefore add to their portfolio of equipment. And then my, my last topic, as we've got about seven minutes to go with um, today, is to go and talk a little bit about this startup programming that we've put together. So this is a summer-based program. It's 12 weeks. And the student, any students that um, get involved in this, if anybody on the call today is within the university um, programming, taking a degree, or if they're a faculty member or a staff member or know of a potential student that they that would be interested in this, then this is this is a this is a summer-based um, full to so full-time position where you would then be working directly with some of these new upcoming startup businesses um, in Alaska on all potential all aspects of what those startup businesses do. This could be engineering design. You see in the top right, uh, Jerry Montoya in 2019, he was an engineer and he helped um, Bharati Medical on, their, on her um, 
non-invasive infrared spectroscopy design. He even went at the time down into lower 48 to do some training because that they, they were looking to support and increase his capacity um, and capabilities. We've had students working with business with um, businesses both in Fairbanks and Anchorage. We've had students remotely working where they're developing computer coded systems or uh, computer aided design projects. We've even had um, successfully had students that have continued working with these companies beyond the time of their summer based internship program. Also, what we do is we bring the students into events where they learn more about the startup environment. This might be what is a small business innovation research award? What are seed funding? How do you pitch and present on a um, company? What is the statewide ecosystem? Who are the players? Who are the people you might want to partner with? This is building their capacity and their capabilities, but also the students can take that back to the business and the business can learn more about ways that they can collaborate with, places to look for funding, places to look for partnerships. And so if I come through and highlight one particular company from um, this year, top left is Carter Solutions. So Jay Byam is the, is the CEO of this group. And he was, he was fortunate to have three interns working with him this year from us. He also had some additional interns. And this dramatically increased the capabilities and, and the size of, of, of these organization and the types of projects that he could then expand into because he had these um, interested, passionate, um, young innovators wanting to work with him and his organization. Aquaga on the top right, this is a uh, company that's licensing technology from UAF and is working with the University of Washington. They had an a, um, intern this summer working on the, the project design and they actually have a small business innovation research project with Arson Air Force Base um, through the US Air Force. They've ended up actually collaborating with and bringing on some partners and, and some, and some um, other em employees um, because of the partnership we, that they've had through the intern and through uh, the i program. Um, Elevated Oats is a um, company based out of Anchorage. They had a couple of interns working with them this year, and one of those has continued and is continuing to work with them beyond the, beyond the summer. So really, it's an opportunity to bring students into the startup environment, give them the training, give them the knowledge, but also build and provide uh, those startup companies in the state with more capacity and capabilities. So I think my final thing to highlight today, I don't see there's any major Q&A or, or um, chat, um, is really just to say, we at Center ICE are here. Uh, we're, we're happy to have conversations, um, get emails, phone calls, setting up Zoom meetings, just willing to listen um, and be able to together build up startup ecosystem in the state. Ways that we can uh, help support those within the university environment to take some of their research and development and move it towards uh, being a more commercially ready uh, product, providing the training and, and, and also funding to, to take some of these ideas and prepare the uh, academics to be resilient in their uh, interactions with the industry, but also just to be a support part of this supportive network that exists in the state of Alaska for startup businesses and, and the ecosystem that's out there. It's really about the giving back and they're collaborating. We're, we're, we're a tight knit community. Uh, we work together on multiple different projects or programs or events. And it's really about having to share the knowledge and the lessons learned to be able to help the next round, the next group um, of innovators that are coming through so we can grow and, and build up and develop um, the state um, and the economic benefits that come from funding, whether it be investment, whether it be seed funding, or whether it be small business innovation types of projects that can come into these businesses based in Alaska and grow up um, the economy of the state. So on that note, two, two minutes to go. I'd like to thank everybody for attending today. Um, we have been uh, recording, so um, myself and the slide deck will be part of the recording on the Center ICE's YouTube channel. So keep your eyes open for that. That'll be uploaded reasonably soon. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about Center ICE and the timing of events, then please do go to our website and just sign up for our newsletter. Uh, you'll then get that on a regular basis. Um, and otherwise, I just wish you a good rest of your Thursday and August um, as we now progress into the fall and then into the uh, winter weather we have here in Alaska. In, in Alaska. 
uh, keep your eyes open for Alaska Startup Week um, events. Um, uh, otherwise, um, enjoy the rest of your um, Thursday and uh, the upcoming weekend. So um, hopefully, Michael, you'll be able to connect up to Nathan on any questions on the Innovator Program. Um, and anybody that would like to collaborate or connect to us, just send me an email, willing to, willing to connect. So thank you all. Um, I will um, stay up to keep the recording going until everybody's uh, signed off. And I wish you all um, a good rest of your week.